right, so we need to examine the pure graph sine curve, which is what we have right here. Um, and there, uh, I'm just showing the graph part. On your paper, you've got all the, uh, the attributes at the bottom, and we'll just go through one by one. You're going to need some colored pencils for this, and it's really important to understand all of the attributes, which means terminology. So when we're graphing these, we kind of know what we're talking about. So let's first start with critical points. So let me put that in here. Critical points. Critical points. And your critical points are right here. And of course, I've only shown one cycle or one period. This continues on over and over. So critical points we can define. They occur at the maximum. They occur at the minimum. And they also occur at the x-intercepts. In addition, that's like one definition, in addition to that, critical points occur at the ends of the arc sections. And we'll talk about that in a second. So all of those things are critical points. Let's now talk about arc sections or arcs. So if you look at the graph, I can see this section right here is one arc, and I'm going to draw it with an arrow on, and then I have a, another arc that's going downward, and then a third arc that's going downward, and then the fourth arc is increasing. So arcs, so we have four equal sections, okay. and then what's unique about the sine, as opposed to the cosine, is when I look at just the pure graph, that's what this is here, the first arc is pointing up or increasing, the second one is decreasing, the third one is decreasing, and the fourth one is increasing. So this was this first one here, that's the one that was increasing. The second one was decreasing, the third one was decreasing, and the fourth one was increasing. Um, they also occur, uh, another bullet point here, at one quarter of the way through the period. So one quarter of the period. So the period is, we might as well skip down and do period right now, since we're talking about it. So the period is 2 pi, and that means one cycle, okay? And I'm going to write that over here. I'm not sure that that's going to show up. So the period is 2 pi, which equals one cycle. So if I just draw dotted line to the x-axis through those critical points. This, let me change colors here. This quarter of the period, here's another quarter of the period, a third quarter of the period, and the fourth quarter of the period. So it's like taking this 2 pi and dividing it in quarters. You'll recognize this one is quadrant 1 from the unit circle. This is quadrant 2 from the unit circle, from pi over 2 to pi. This is quadrant 3 from the unit circle. And this is quadrant 4 from the unit circle. All right, now let's talk about um, roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. And all of those things mean the same thing. They're just different words for where it crosses the x-axis. And you can see that we have already um, identify those as a critical point, and there's already a uh, 
little dot there signifying it. So now we just need to write it in some kind of some kind of format here. So the, the zeros or the x-intercepts, well, they occur at zero, and it occurred at pi, and it occurred at two pi, and if I kept going, it would occur at three pi and four pi and dot 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 and I can think of this as a one pi and I can think of this as a zero pi and so I can just sum that up that say that says that the zeros appear every k where k is an integer pi. So every k pi there is a zero. Alright, let's talk about amplitude. So first of all, amplitude has a formula, and the formula is one half the absolute value of your y maximum value minus your y minimum value. So let's do this example here um, and show you how it works, just with this one right here. So here's my maximum, and of course my maximum occurs at 1. Here's my minimum down here. And of course, that occurs at negative 1. So I have 1 half times the absolute value of 1 minus negative 1, working inside parentheses. And I'm going to go to the right because I'm not sure how much of the bottom of the screen you can see. So that's 1 half of 2. And then 1 half of 2, of course, is 1. So the amplitude of this is 1. Um, the next thing that is on your paper. I think says pure graph and what pure graph means is no translations. We'll get into translations shortly but a pure graph means no translations. Let's see we talked about period the domain we will squeeze the domain in here. We already know that the domain of the sine curve is all real numbers, we can write x as an element of all real numbers. Uh, you could just write all real numbers. And the range, we'll squeeze that in here to the range. So in interval notation, the minimum value is negative 1, the maximum value is 1. And another thing to note here is a pure sine graph is continuous. And I think of a roller coaster. It sure looks like a roller coaster to me. So it's continuous. There's no breaks. There's no peaks or sharp points. Uh, no sharp edges. So we'll just put points. I guess that works. Nice and smooth and continuous. Um, and then one more thing I want to cover is where our maximums and minimums occur. Some room here. Okay, so the maximums occur. Let's see, we have a maximum of pi over 2, and then if this kept going, I would have another maximum at another 2 pi. So we say it's pi over 2 plus k 2 pi. And then the minimum, likewise, the minimum here is occurring at 3 pi over 2. And it would occur again uh, with another wrap of the circle, so plus k to pi. You might have to write that into in the spot there in the paper. All right, so these are all the attributes of a pure sine graph. So uh, what I'd like you to do is turn the paper over and do the cosine graph, and you'll find that there are some things that are the same and some things that are different. In fact, I think that's the bottom question on the next page is, list some things that are the same and list some things that are different and then be prepared to um, count that as some of your homework too.